Hello, just Jamie here. Thanks for checking out my latest emulation video. So before I start this video, I just want to say thanks for watching it and uh, thanks for all my subscribers you know, tuning in to watch my latest emulation videos. I do a range of different videos on my channel, music, tuition, obviously emulation, tuition, gameplay and modern games, so everything. So I need your support to upgrade the channel, as it were. I need new microphones, I need new backdrops, I can't keep going on using this. So I need a lot of stuff to enhance my channel to make it so much better. But anyway, uh, check out links in my description and enjoy the video. Take care. Okay, so firstly, thanks for everyone who voted on my community post the other day. In first place, we had MSX. So some of you wanted to watch an MSX tutorial. So for this, I've gone out my way as always, and I found a very, very, very good emulator for this. In fact, it's the definitive emulator. So a little bit of context, a bit of background for MSX. It came out around 1983. And it hit it Japan, where it was released originally, uh, more than the rest of the world, certainly the UK. In the UK, at the time, we had a booming industry with Sinclair computers. We also had other micros in the background, such as the Auric and Dragon 32. You know, the list goes on. There was a hell of a lot of micros being released in the early 80s. So the MSX, some of you might find it very confusing to grasp. It was new to MSX. So a little bit like 3DO, it was manufactured by a range of different manufacturers and companies around the world. So if you look for example for MSX, you'll find loads of different keyboards, computers, and it might all seem a bit confusing. This is because each manufacturer, each company had its own casing design, but essentially the hardware was the same. Every company manufacturer was working from the same blueprint. So there's a lot to learn about MSX if you're interested in it, but essentially there's four MSX computers which were designed by, like I say, lots of different manufacturers. The most famous one here in the UK was the Toshiba MSX, which seemed to have sold relatively well, but didn't quite beat Sinclair, which is a shame because if MSX got to the UK first, I'm pretty sure it would have been a different story in the 80s industry in the UK. So still a popular computer, and by the looks of things after reading, MSX didn't actually sell too well in the United States. So let's just get on with this. So I'm using Blue MSX for this tutorial. Links in my description. And before I start this tutorial, just be sure to hit the bell for notifications. Uh, that's really going to help my channel. So from the link in the description, there's two options here. I'm using Windows 11 for this, by the way. So there's two options to choose, Blue MSX, Full or Minimal. So I'm going to go for the Full, and I suggest you do the same. This is going to give you the Full experience. And unlike a lot of my other tutorials for these all micro emulation systems, uh, most of these are portable, but this one is actually an installation. But it's not hard, it's just another installation. I'm sure a lot of you watching this will understand by now how to install things. So let's just open this up and you're going to get your installer. So just a generic installation. So just choose where you want this to install to. For me, it's on my C drive and I'm going to install this for just me. Uh, okay, so next, next. And if you should get a pop-up, then just obviously press yes. It's a safe file, no problems with this one. And close, okay. So uh, next thing you're going to see on your desktop is a little icon. This is a shortcut actually, and this is going to bring us into the interface itself. So on first looks, there's a lot here. You've got all these little buttons going about everywhere. And you know, there, there's a lot of information on this uh, window, which has just popped up. It's very easy. It took me a little while to grasp it for this tutorial, but I'm glad I did because I've learned a lot about MSX and it's a very, very decent system to play games on. And the homebrew scene is superb. There are some fantastic games coming out for MSX here in 2023. So to load the game then, this is why you're watching this, to load the game, what I'm going to do is just head over to my favourite website to catch up on the latest releases for vintage retro systems, which is Indie Retro News. If you've never heard of this website, I seriously suggest you check it out. On the left hand side here, we have the systems and I'm going to go for MSX and this will give us a list of all the latest releases for MSX computers. So it's just a case of just searching through here and finding a game you might like. 
So some of these you're going to have to pay for, some of them are free or to donate to the developers. I'm going to just go for this MSX1 game which I was playing a minute ago and it's quite fun. And uh, this website it's pretty much laid out all the same, if you just scroll down slightly you'll often have source or download. You can actually play this particular game online but I'm going to just go to download and it's going to open up this mega website, just download the file. And this is going to generate a compressed RAR file. You might use WinZip or 7-Zip. I'm going to just unextract this. I'm going to just open this up. And you are going to see a few different ROM files. Now, a lot of MSX games, they were produced on cartridge. Uh, you'll have cassette files and some discs, but from what I see of things, largely these are cartridge files. And these are called ROMs, uh, which is read-only memory. So you've got a selection here for this particular game. I'm gonna go for the English ROM. And something else to say about Blue MSX emulator is that you don't need to be searching around for BIOS files and this and that. It's all included in the package. It's a great emulator, it truly is. So just delete this compressed zipped folder, don't need that anymore. And I'm going to go back into MSX. So to load this ROM file, I'm going to just go to File. And we got a range of different options here for our media, which we're going to be loading. So in this case, it's a ROM. So I'm going to go to cartridge slot one. I'm going to just simply go to insert. So depending on where your game is downloaded to, in my case, it's downloaded to my desktop. So I'm going to just select this. Just double left click on this. So you can control MSX games from controller, but some of them are going to be keyboard only. So for example, on this game, spacebar operates as the fire button. And I'm just using my cursor keys to control this little dude here. So this is actually an MSX1 game. So same generation is say the Commodore 64 or ZX Spectrum. And you can see the quality is very high in this. And of course, this emulator is also going to play just fine classic MSX games. Okay, so for a full screen mode, all you're going to do is press left all on your keyboard and F12 together. And there we have it. How awesome is this? And to exit out, and to exit out while you're full screen, to go back to the window mode, you're just going to press Alt, left Alt, that is on your keyboard, and F11. There you go. So like I say, this particular game doesn't seem to support controllers, joysticks, joypads. So let me show you inside another game how you're going to make this happen for games which do support it. So just exit out of that. So just a quick note, it seems that this emulator don't support zip files. So if you do have a game and it's in zip format, just unextract it and get the actual file out. In this case, I have got MX2. So just drag that onto the desktop and I'm gonna delete this zipped folder. So let's go back into the emulator. So if I just double left click on the shortcut here, and to look at this one, I'm going to go through the same process. So we have a .rom and we also have a .mx2. Uh, .mx2 is a cartridge file too, so insert this one. And I'm going to select 1942, double left click. And like I say, this one is fully controllable with my PS3 controller. It's um, a very complex emulator, like I said at the start of this video, there's a lot of options on there, but it's not as bad as it seems. And it's well worth looking into with this emulator, like I said, there truly are some great games on the platform. So all you're going to do to configure your controller to work with MSX is just navigate down to where it says keyboard and joy config, which is very small admittedly. And on joystick one, you will have little bar here saying none. I'm going to just go down and select two button joystick. And it's just a case of hovering your cursor over the different buttons on the joypad you see. 
and then correspond it with your controller which is plugged in so for example I'm going to press up on here and I'm going to press up and down down left right and in some cases this will detect it automatically so it's not a big issue to sort controllers out and just OK as you can see now I've got this working with my controller so that's the controller side of things with this emulator so other things you can do here so if we just look at control and video little buttons here if we go to video you can actually manipulate the color of what you see and we can also stretch the image vertically and horizontally and use a deep interlace feature which is going to slightly change things so change colors on this all you're going to do is literally just use these here to make it darker make it lighter and you know just manipulate it the way you want it to be manipulated so h stretch horizontally so lots of features just there and say you've got a game which is registered to be controlled by port 2 like some micros would all you're going to do here is just go to the control button and there's two options here so you can swap between each one of these easily just by pressing say on 2 and selecting two button joystick and it works a lot like that so perhaps you fancy a really old school look to these MSX games so this is very simple all we need to do is go to options and if you go to the emulation and go to window we can change the monitor type so for example this one by default is set to color but if we drop this down we can actually set this to black and white we can set it to green uh, Commodore pet look and you've also got monitor emulation which is going to add different effects such as scaling so if we just go back to color and this is working on the fly whilst I configure these so let me just show you what I mean if we go to monitor emulation we can change it to YC and if you notice on the screen it's given us a slight different look almost like a ghosty effect in some cases so that's entirely up to you how you configure this for your own preferences and whilst we're under the emulation settings option if you don't particularly like all of this jazzy stuff going wrong with all these little buttons all over the place if we just go to settings here and under theme you can drop this and go to classic which gives us more of a classic emulation look and lastly something really good about this emulator like some emulators do we can also change its full resolution so once you're going full screen we can have it a bit more detailed a bit more defined so under these settings if you just go to performance here if we go to full screen resolution you can drop this and you can change it to the resolution of your choice so let's for example just check out the 1280 by 800 just okay that and from here I'm gonna go back in this full screen by pressing left all and F12 together so excuse the wobble just there that was me a minute ago whilst just messing around with the settings under video settings that is but as you can see uh, the resolution for full screen or so you need to find out the resolution your monitor supports and choose appropriately to go with this okay so that's about it for the msx and blue msx tutorial so like i explained at the beginning of this video there's a lot to learn about msx and if you're not familiar with it like i said it, it is essentially a situation like the 3do it had the blueprints and different manufacturers would design their own look for it but all the games were pretty much running the same regardless of the manufacturer they all run on the same set of instructions so definitely check out the homebrew community and the latest games for msx using the retro indie site linked in my description and for anyone out there who fancies donating for the work i put in for you to learn from i've now got a paypal option where you can donate and also check out my patreon and buy me a coffee until next time see you later take care